let's talk about tournaments because something's big is coming to Kent and it is the CC Initiative next tournament. Hi and welcome to another video from me, Christopher DBG. So I haven't really had a chance to get in front of the camera for a while. It's just busy life. But one of the big things I've been doing is working with a good friend of mine who is a fellow judge and came fourth at one of the Kent tournaments. It's a massive shout out to him. But me and him are running our second tournament, part of the Seize the Initiative brand. The next one is on the 8th of February, called the Season Initiative Vitality. Today's video is really talking about the tournament pack, but it'd be interesting to know if what type of tournaments you've gone to, what would you want to change, where would you want to be, um, did it go well, did it go bad, all those sort of things. Did DICE actually just betray you on the day? Because <laughs> that does happen. The biggest change, and I want to get out there for first, is the fact we're now ITC registered at this tournament, which is huge, um, absolutely huge. Really like the fact we are, even though I keep referring to it as ICT, which is not ITC, um, which is the Ash Internet um, Independent Tournament scene um, done by Frontline Gaming, uses the Best Coast pairing app as part of its thing, which I love the app for a judge point of view. Um, and I've used it as a player and I really like the fact that it's digital. Not always good if you don't have your phone and stuff, but judges can input data themselves, so it's quite cool. Um, but being ITC registered means that it means that you know local players can get another chance to get on the national scoring bit um, scores. I really like it. Um, the missions, I'm 50-50 on some of them. And that's one of the restrictions of being ITC is you've just got to have their logo. So I'll be updating the pack, if you haven't looked at the pack already, which is on all on the CC Initiative pages. You've got to fill out a couple of questionnaires on it first, just so we filter out people who are rubbish. Um, and not rubbish as in playing, but you know, rubbish as in scammers and stuff like that, because we just don't want that on our page. Um, so it just helps with that, and then all our events are on that on there as well. The next one is Vitality. That's the one that's IT um, C registered. So um, you have to apply each time. Uh, me and my partner are sort of planning every at the moment, possibly four months, at least try and get four in it, three or four a year, and then do some different events like doubles or maybe even going to AOS as well because I know a lot of people love that in our local community um, especially at Fanatic Gaming they're all really big at Age of Sigma I'm not so big in it but I have bought quite a few copies of Mortal Realms so that might be a way of me getting involved in the game I'm not too sure yet I, I, I think I love 40k and 30k too much to get another system but I have got Sinesh Demons which are my next um, one of my next projects, you know me, I've got loads going on. Um, so that might go into, well, it fits for AOS, so why not? But let's talk about the tournament pack itself. Like I said, being registered with ITC, and thanks to Aceace at Twisted Dice as well, who gave us the approval, so good shout out to them. Great channel for battle reports as well, so plug that as much as I can, because they are really cool, I really like them. But the restrictions on there, I think, is really to only have the logo. That's what you've got to do and advertise the fact that it is. Um, is that it's brilliant, which means you can add your own rules, um, missions, and stuff out, which I have have done. But we're evolving all the time. The last one was really it was a mixture of the standard missions out of the book, um, out of three three missions I felt were the best across all three chapter approves at the time um, and this one is our own missions with ITC twist onto it so um, we'll go through it all 
So this is the initiative. It's on the 8th of February. It's in Birchington because that's where um, a good hall is that we use. So we can get about 20 people in there for the scenery and the mats that I've got. But it can expand as well. We're just hoping um, that it can build on that. It's a quite a nice tournament. And the attitude really is about sportsmanship themed. And that's it. You know, so you theme, you theme your armies with good sportsmanship. So it's a little bit like no retreat. The fact that you have to request to play. Um, and then me and my partner sit down and we judge people's armies. And the history within the tournament as well. If they've been part of seats before. Um, and, and just go through that. So it doesn't mean you're just automatically accepted. Um, there's a reason why we've got a reserve list and things like that. But, you know, people drop out so that reserve list changes. So if you're interested, do let us know. Get involved. Get space. The first game, it's 8.30 till 9, is the registration. The first game's at 9, and we set a two hour limit. Um, so it's not stock clocks or things like that on the table, because I, I think that defeats what we're trying to do uh, with the attitude. Um, but first game, two hours. The second game, 15 minutes after that, um, two hours again, and then lunch. Lunch is important in my venues. Um, last time we did Domino's, um, and we'll probably do the same as well. So it's really good value. The event itself is £17.50. It was £15 before, but food's expensive at Domino's. Um, we're not doing like an Uber or McDonald's because there isn't a McDonald's that will do that at the moment. So, but uh, plus pizza's better, let's be honest. Um, it's an hour for lunch, but some people like, to, you know, people like, go, do you know what? I just want three, five minutes. It's fine. During that time, all the armies get displayed and all the players get to vote for what they feel is the best themed and best painted. And then me and fellow judge will go round, calculate those results. The top three means we'll pick one of those top three. The reason for that is it helps with unbiasedness. You know, I've been to events where painting is a massive thing and adds scores to generalship, which I really hate. But painting awards completely separate, which I love. The problem with that is if you go as like a big team, like I used to belong to Southampton Strike Force back in the day. Um, I mean, a lot of people knew us, and yes, the armies were amazing. There were some amazing painters in that in that team, one person used to always get those votes. Arguably, didn't win um, that many of the competitions, but that could be, you know, favour because they were voting for a friend and stuff like that, um, and other teams that were bigger. So I like the fact that you can get your top three and that should give you a general idea of one, the calibre. The fact that it is a smaller tournament means that you get People are being a little bit more honest, I feel. Um, at larger tournaments, it's a bit harder to monitor. Like, I've been involved in big tournaments, like 80 players and stuff like that, back in 4th, 5th and 6th. I used to run quite a lot of tournaments. Um, and 7th, we just don't speak about. Or 6th, we don't speak about. 7th was... 8th yeah, is good. I like 8th. So that gives you a chance for the painting. I like... The themed part is part of that. If you live... Like my friend Phil says, um, if your army looks like an army on a board, it's okay. Um, he hates soup with a passion, um, but I don't mind soup. But it's got to look themed. I think it's important. Um, and painting should be awarded. Last game, 2.30 or 2.30, 2.15, 4.30 again, two hours set on all our games. And a nice little break gives me and judge just sort of a chance to write all the certificates up for everyone who's taking part. 50% of them go, basically do better next time. <laughs> the bottom 50 and the top 50 um, get get well done. The certificate basically, a little bit of banter. Um, did it the last time, the video is there as well if you want to watch the last video of the awards and stuff like that. And James, part of Devil's Brush, obviously, did his 
uh, tournament venture as well, which is really cool. And we've got Rykart coming to this one as well, part of Devil's Brush. There's a lot of vaccine um, painting and um, playing with James quite a lot as well, so it'll be really cool to see him. And then 4.30 till 5, we'll do the awards um, and celebrations, basically. Um, last place I always feel needs a little bit of a booby prize, which I quite like. Um, then we have the second prize, not second prize, the, the second prize goes to, you want to call it first prize or booby prize, I don't know. But the next person that gets something is best sportsman. So as part of the uh, round scoring, you've got the digital version, but also a paper, paper slip, and that is more for the judges, so we can um, keep a running track if anyone miscalculates or doesn't, doesn't, understand the secondaries and things like that, which we'll go into later. So that's the way of doing that. But also on there, you vote for, out of the three games, who is the best sporting. Um, and the person with the best sporting wins their own separate uh, prize, because that is really important. I don't think it should add to generalship, but definitely being recognized as best sporting is really important. And you've got best painting, um, although besides best sporting is not always your best, most funnest game, you could get absolutely annihilated in your best sport. But a person played well, he, you know, he didn't suddenly be that guy going, oh no, you're a millimeter out, you can't do that. You know, there's there's things you know that you've had a good game even if you've lost, but that's because the players made it a good game, an entertaining game, and they were all there to play a hobby, playing with toy soldiers got three games, got a day of it, you don't want to get it ruined by someone, and that's basically what it's about. So everyone's trying to get the best sportsman, which I really liked last time, everyone was really good, and everyone got at least one point or one vote um, for best sporting, um, so that was that's really nice, actually, I like that. Then we got best painting, um, who was won by John last time, and the person who got the same votes as him, um, was James um, and Jane, James will see on the channel and John comes from Mike Cliff claiming he should be coming again a really interesting Blood Angels list and James had a Catachan guard list at that point so that's the awards and then obviously first prize goes to the best person who's played on the day and that's what we're going to go into how do you get that first prize it's obviously by missions and by victory points so the missions itself have got their own names. So we've got mission one is ground control. And I've named these, so they're a work in progress. <laughs> but set for this tournament, might change for the next one. Um, all of the missions are unique to these initiative tournaments. Um, and they have their own initial uh, what's the right word? Initial points as well as just the ones that are standard. I'm reading a little bit of the pack as well. So, in all missions, players roll off and the winner picks their deployment zone. Um, when choosing the deployment zone, they set up the whole entire army or second, depending on what they choose. Uh, the player that is deployed first goes first. Unless obviously seized, and obviously being a seized initial tournament, we like seeing that as well. So you roll off, you pick your sides, you put your army down. There's none of the chapter pre seventeen sort of uh, back and forth, which I quite like, but that's not applicable to this tournament. We always judge it by the players' votes, so it'd be interesting to know if you've played in those tournaments, which which type of mission sets you prefer. Is this something you like? Or completely hate would be interesting though. All missions have Dawn of War. Just to keep it nice and simple and standard. That might change, um, but I'm not too sure. I quite like the fact that it's set. Um, it means as a organizer, I'm 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 responsible for quite well almost all of the scenery um, and all of the maps. Most of it's provided by Devil's Brush um, sponsors, um, which is Evan. Evan Max, so we've got loads of cool scenery and stuff out, and I'm building loads as well, I'm painting up, um, and I've got some War Gamers, 
small game tr tournament terrain as well coming like I bought a big pack of that just to really get some decent L shapes um, of buildings on the board so which I know is really important for ITC so um, or the style of ITC which is what we'll get into been to some, some tournaments where objectives can be placed on different levels of buildings and that really mucks over nights and um, actually mucks over quite a lot of the game I feel it ruins the flow when you're trying to climb up like a massive building and stuff like that yeah it can make you the boards really feel themed but actually when you throw objectives in sometimes it just throws off the actual point of it um, or allows one person to be up 20 inches with that one scout unit infiltrated scoring points every time because I hold that objective and there's no way of getting him down you know um, if you're a combat based Nurgle army for example you might as well write off that objective um, so yeah it's difficult in that way so all objectives are placed um, are all on the ground floor and they're all 40 mil as well currently in discussions with someone to get um, objectives preset um, for um, or the same objectives for all the tables but don't know yet so um, if you're a player coming I recommend you bring your objectives as well 40 mil I have got some spare but you know everyone should have their own objectives or at least a marker or something to represent that again 40 mil all placed on the on the ground floor um, if there's a building there then you can call it when we call a judge over it and we'll sort out a terrain um, so it's even and stuff like that um, Obviously, distance from models is from the base to the base of the objective. Nice and simple. Um, that's all. Each mission is minimum and maximum six turns, so no rolling. I think that's important as well because I've been to a lot of tournaments where that fifth or that sixth and seventh turn can really drastically change your scores and also the style you play. Um, if you're winning by turn five, and you you think it's gonna end, some some people then to try and hold out a little bit longer. Should I say slow play, um, which is what I really hate. And you could be going. Do you know what? I know I'm a turn five. I've designed my army around turn four, five, and six, and turn one to three is just holding the line. You know, I hate in tournaments. I hate the more randomness like maelstrom for example in tournaments i absolutely hate even with the deck building so that just that element of you go there you know there's only six turns so go for it you know there's no extra turn there's no end of turn five that you know the someone's going to come all the way to the end and try and build to last or build to destroy it's up to you standard the person with the most victory points obviously wins but how do you score them? I've tried to split these up into three categories. So one called during your turn, one called the back the end of the battle round, and then you've got secondaries as well. And these are set in every mission plus the own unique mission objective as well, which I'll go into in each one. So let's just do the broad things. So it's a bit old school in there, but I like it. So during your turn, unit destroyed. Get a point for killing someone. Brilliant. No more than one. And if you kill two, brilliant. You still get one, but you, you blab that you kill two, whatever. But if you kill a unit, you get one. That's during your turn. You can't score it in your opponent's turn. That's what's important. A lot of people I've, I've seen trying to do that at tournaments when they've like double counted. And I've killed in the turn, so I've killed you in your turn, so that's two points. No, nope. it's in your turn. If you kill one, you get a point. Next is hold. So obviously this sort of the balances between horde armies and sort of the control armies, and then the elite armies. The elites are gonna kill more, but they're not necessarily gonna hold more. So I think this is a nice count balance. So hold one objective during your turn, score a point. Brilliant. Um, and then there's miss Mission critical, score one victory point if you control all of the objectives at the end of your turn. So there's another way, again, this is really objective heavy, but I like it. It's forcing people out, it's forcing people to attack, it's not forcing people to defend. 
Um, or if you're defending, you're actually stopping that point. So it's quite cool in that way. End of the battle round is a bit old school. You've got to kill more. If you kill more during your opponent in the round, you score a point. If you if you hold more, again, it's that counterbalance between elite versus hordes, um, or elite versus control, or alpha versus control. If you hold more, you score a point. In theory, so if you kill one and they haven't killed any, you're scoring two points in the round, which I think is, you know, is a nice way of doing it. It means it could be high scoring, but also it means it can be low scoring as well when you've got those resistant based armies. Um, you know, Nurgle, for example, then you've got Tau. You know, those two resistant armies are going to be really hard to shift in certain things. So, secondaries, really simple. You've got first strike, kill one, kill a unit in the first round. Not first blood, first strike. I like that, forces you out to get something. Line breaker, again, one or more units in the enemy's deployment zone, which I really like because you can go muck around with different deployment zones, that's why it's Dawn War. Um, then you get an extra point. Again, it's forcing you to get that point, but also knowing the fact that turn six is maximum, you can plan a little bit as well, rather than the randomness. Uh, warlord, yeah, we all like killing a warlord. Love to do a challengey thing, like if your warlord kills a warlord, maybe extra point, but maybe for something else. Maybe for an AOS one, that might be quite cool. Um, and then the last strike, which I quite like. We added this last time, and it really changed the dynamics of people's thinking. So the last strike's not the last turn of like the two hours, it, it's physically, if you've killed a unit in turn six, that's it. You can't score it in any other way. So you've got to try and get to turn six. Again, doesn't force, helps with the people trying to slow play. Plus, me and my partner are always walking around, um, going around and sort of encouraging, you know, hosting like judges should do. And make sure everyone's gay if we need drinks or anything like that and that's what we're going around at that time we can glimpse at the table and make sure everything is kosher which i think is important there's quite a lot of how to score and that's why my scorecards are important to keep track of all those turns and the rounds as well um and the secondaries are pretty standard eject the secondaries apart from life strike which does you know sometimes you don't want to kill something on the turn, the turn five and you know you can kill it turn six at the same time if you don't they could get killed more or they could get, just get hold more, or you know, because they've got that one unit that you just don't want to kill, but you're holding out and they're always killing a unit every turn. So they're scoring points, which is important. It doesn't it means you're not out of the running in a sense, you know, so it's good in that way. If you are I think it comes across as standard if you're if you do get tabled then the, the rest of the game plays out and obviously you're not going to get kill more anymore but you're always going to get hold more and things like that so there's advantages and disadvantages to wiping out your army or wiping out your opponent not wiping out your own army so you disadvantages to that um so ground control the ground control special mission is called hold the line Score one victory point if you control three or more objectives at the end of your turn. Now the objectives themselves, there's one in your deployment zone that's 36 inches along and six inches up. And then there's one in the center, two across, a bit like a five-sided dice. And obviously one in your opponent. So it's quite hard to hold free unless you're really controlling that sensor but it's not overpowering and the fact is it means there's still opportunity as well um so i quite like that so hold the line score one for each point if you control three or more objectives at the end of your turn and equally it's the end of your turn not the round so you could quickly get there and then get killed off and they could hold it back you know it's, so it is it's a good way of scoring points. The next one is called Deny Intelligence. It's quite like this one. Each player picks and marks an objective. 
and score one victory point if you control your opponent's march mark objective at the end of your turn. So you could pick one in your deployment zone, for example, or you could or you could know that they're really a salty army and pick one in theirs. And if they don't hold it, E8 is a thing. Now they could both pick the same objective, which make it really challenging. The way the objectives are on this, uh, both in deployment zone, they're 18 inches along and 12 inches up, and then they are 24 apart. So they're both literally sat in those corners. That's and there's only four objectives in that. So quite an interesting dynamic. The fact that you pick one, and you have to force your opponent go out. I didn't want to center one there because I think a lot of people would pick that, and it becomes like a dominating zone, and it becomes um what's the word stationary once they're there you know they just stay there hold their objectives and that's it where this one actually forces you a little bit out um to go forward so it's good for that again we'll see how it goes and the last one which is quite cool i quite like it anyway it's called not is all lost or all is not lost all is not lost um, the secret objective is called full control. Score D3 victory points if you control an objective at the end of your turn. So again, it's only one, one objective, but you're only getting one D one D3 as well. You're not getting like three D3 for the three objectives you control. Should change the wording in that actually. If you control any or all objectives or something like that at the end of your turn. So the objectives in this, it's one in the center, and there's two 12 inches apart, all in the center of no man's land. So the disadvantage of this is people are gonna have to fight for that objective. D3 is quite commanding, um, but equally, it's really hard to get. There's no objective in your deployment zone, so you have to get out. Um, it could award those fast armies at the start, but then really hinder them because most fast armies are not resilient enough to hold a, a center. Um, they have to wait for backup. That's the reason why they're fast. So it'd be interesting that. And also D3 just adds that a little bit of randomness so it isn't completely overpowered, but something different than the other, other missions. Also, it's a last mission, so it does make it a little bit more fun. Um, I think adding that extra challenger dynamic. I'll see how it goes. Um, they're a bit of a take on what we've done before, and we're just involving those missions. So every time, feedback's really important to us. So if you've got any missions that you've played that you just absolutely loved, or even think of missions that you think, actually, this would be really cool to play, Tell us about it and you never know, might even call it a name and we might name it in there as well. Might be a mission named after you, you never know. So, nitty gritty, you've got all the missions, you've got all the time and stuff, but really how many points is it? It's 1500, maximum three detachments, which I think is pretty standard. Um, this deadline is on the 3rd of February, so we're not that far away now. List will be made public on the 5th of February following the Best Coast pairing up. So um, I believe even if you're not a member, you can have a look at them, so, um, which is quite cool. Um, pairing system is done on a Swiss system and then prioritized over win or lose and then battle points as well. So you in theory should be playing someone at the same standard or at least had the same luck as you <laughs> in the same rounds. We know what I mean. All armies must be battle forged. So our first tournament was mono, um, a single faction, um, and single, so single, single faction and single something else as well, single legion and stuff like that. So you couldn't have world eaters with Empress children, for example. It was just you pick Empress children. So we did, we looked on that and the way that forty k is going, especially with Space Marines. The, all the other chapters that are that rely on the soup mechanic are getting disadvantaged where space marines are better mono 
Um, and there's a clear divide at the moment where Space Marines lead, and we'll see how healthy it all goes and see how many um, Chaplin Dreadnoughts are in there. So it'll be interesting on that. Um, I've been asked this um, by a couple of people, and I've been to a couple of tournaments that have done it, and I don't like it. So when people have an, a unit, and they've printed off the PDF of the rules. If they're in beta, fair enough. They are by PDF. But I will say they should be checked if they're a right PDF, because I have seen, I have been to a tournament where someone's been kicked out because they forged PDFs back in third, I want to say, so many, many years ago. Um, it's just a moron. But if you don't have the book, you don't have the rule. <laughs> that is my opinion. I don't like the fact that people just ring up. Um, and much as we love Battle Scribe, I'm an advocate for it, I love it. But there's quite a lot of people that go, oh yeah, I just write an army list on Battle Scribe and I'll buy the book cards. No, because Battle Scribe's not 100%. Don't get me wrong, it's very accurate. But it's not 100%. And if the player wants to see the rule, where it's written in the rule, you can't just give them a Battle Scribe app, go, there it is, it, it just doesn't work. So, you need, the, you need the book. Yes, I know that can involve loads of chapter approves, loads of erratas, the Forge World errata, the, the Forge World supplements, if you're going down that route as well. It doesn't matter if you've picked that unit, you should have the rule book for it, not just a random PDF. Not only does that breach all the, the, the copyright and all that sort of stuff, um, where you've just printed off a website, um, but physically having that book is important. I think that's key. Um, anyway, that's how I, that's what I believe anyway. And that's when the rule is going to be in the book. So, armies must be painted, three colours and base. Not to any particular standard, but you know, at least, at least power ready. That's what I view as. They don't need to be amazingly painted, even though I'd love everyone to be amazingly painted. I hate painting with a passion. Um, I was working for Games Workshop, killed it for me. But I still like playing with painting models, and it looks amazing when you take photos, you know, get all the videos out there as well. It's nice to see a table full of painting models. I have gone to a couple of tournaments where it's sort of been more friendly um, and they've said if you haven't painted your models add the re add a, this was in 6th, 7th you added the your army got re-rolled ones to hit against an unpainted model quite light and <laughs> very game changing um, but I didn't like seeing non-painted models so but that's my personal opinion on it um, the next one is about ruins and things like that, and the magic boxes. And it's quite confusing about magic boxes. They're just we're just not allowing them. But the tournament, there is no magic box in a sense. And if you don't know what that means, essentially all bottom level terrain blocks line of sight. But weekly you can't go in the in a four that hasn't got a, a clear entrance in and out. The doors are not doors, so you've got to go through rubble and stuff, you know, where that building could be perfectly like there, but there's a gap here. And that's really bad, me showing it, but you know what I mean. So they've got two walls and the building's in the middle. The two walls and the ruins are in the middle. That means you can walk through there so you can shoot people in these ruins, but you can't shoot people here, basically. But if it's like this, and it's a nice box, people are putting a model in there, and they just become a magic box. You could still get charged if you're one inch away, but there were big magic boxes, and it was really um, annoying to like the older players that could jump back into a building and basically essentially park a flyer. And it was just, it was stupid, but that's it. So, and that was something from the last tournament, and we had some really good feedback about sort of more clear on the terrain. We tried to build the terrain in such a way that it's quite distinctive. Um, they most of them have got, have got bases now, and if you on that terrain piece, you can in cover. 
all line of sight is blocked even if there's windows on the bottom level obviously you can go through top top level or second level um going down but that's how it is um i think that's really important it just adds to the game and it adds to that effect as well of what it would be like just yeah it's just annoying when you could be a gun line and you could see everything and terrain means nothing if you're shooting through it um like in sixth and seventh you at least got a four plus cover save for example um if you're shooting past a terrain piece going through a window made sense to me um four plus maybe a bit high especially in today's buffing world but back then you didn't really get anything else that was quite vital problem is it turned to a game with everyone just having a full blast save so it was boring um so that's how it is so yeah all holes windows first floor block on that side really simple really simple if there's if anyone goes do you know what i just don't know or wants to us that's the reason why we're judges that's why we're walking around and we're very clear all my tables are very themed as well um, if you've seen the last video, and I've got, like I said, I've got more terrain coming and stuff to make it a little bit more themed to the map. So, there's a little bit of niceness there. Um, what else? All having WYSIWYG. I know that sounds silly, but what you see is what you get. I think it's quite, when you're in the crux of a game, round five, I see a sergeant with a power fist and I know not to charge it because it's got a power fist and I need to work around it. I won't remember the fact that the guy has told me I hadn't got a power fist unless he points out and that would then could have changed my rest of that movement um, based on that. So I think it can be too late. So that's, so WYSIWYG is important. Obviously, I always like this one, conversions. I am an advocate for conversions. I love conversions. I love people seeing their creativity and doing what they can. I actually had some amazing green stuff people, um, green stuff people, people that can work with green stuff, do sculpting and stuff like that. And people are like, oh, that's not quite Wizzy Wiggins. And I'm like, as long as it looks what it should be, that's fine. Um, and if you ever, if you ever go to a tournament, I think it's always advisable to just send a picture to the judge or even to that group just saying this is what it is, anyone have a problem with it and turn up on the day and then people got a problem with it, you just that's not a good place to be. Um, so I think conversions are important um, for the game, the hobby, but the tournaments, you just need to let them know prior. That's basically it. Um, all three, this is another one which I quite like because it sets the standard. All freebies have to be on an army list. So free relics, free warlord traits, free psychic powers, litanies, whatever it is, has to be on that list. But also can't be changed. Unless there's a CP that does it. Then that's in game, so I don't really care. So, but obviously if you spend something on an extra warlord trait, for example, that's fine, that's you spending it, that anything free is set. What I like the idea of is that a tournament is almost like a mini campaign. Your army has landed on a planet, it's got one HQ, he knows what he's doing for that. He doesn't suddenly go, well, do you know what, I'm going to have time, just have a little read of another book. And become CP rolling guy. <laughs> you know, he's gonna, do you know what, today I want some extra strength. I'm going to be stronger for this Warlord trait. It, it, to me, it doesn't fit right. So freebie, you know, always going in the cupboard to get a list of list of different relics, <laughs> you know, based on the person he's fighting. Anything free is set. When you're spending it, they're going out and grabbing it by some other means. So I spent mine there, but freebies should be listed. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, it'll be interesting to know if you've had, had that strict ruling or you've gone to tournaments and it's completely open. Um, to me, I like seeing on a list because I know what I'm playing against. Um, I know what to expect, but also 
It's just that transparency as well helps me as a judge. All erratas, FQs, and things like that, and beta armies are in place. The big thing, legends are in place. I don't want to take that away. Could change. Um, LVO could massively block a lot of legends. Um, Chaplain Dreadnought, depending on how Marines do. If they do really well, we can see them going in the legends, I think. If they do badly, I think they'll just leave them. Um, that poor recasting person has <laughs> sold more than whatever Forge World's ever sold <laughs> is, is remaking, which I think, no, but I like the fact the legends are in place. I think it's important to the hobby for me because I've got a lot of legendaries. I've got that chaplain on bike. I've got all those things that still have rules and they're still current to the game. Yeah, they're a little bit pricey, but if they make your army more fiend, the fanatical, you know, then put them in. That's that's my view. Do you know what you think of legendaries? Is there any that in your art you think that you're completely unbalanced? Is that Chaplain Dreadnought too powerful for what it is? Are they going? To, do you think they should increase the points, or they're just going to ban it or completely and just say no legendaries across all tournaments? Um, which again, I think a lot of tournaments are running no legendaries, but this tournament is we can have them um, again. I'll put it to a people vote to see what they vote on. Apart from that, Crux of Fear is seventeen pound fifty for a day tournament, which I think is pretty good when it comes to food. If you're interested, get on the tournament um, page, which is CZ Initiative Wargame Tournaments, or Wargamer Tournaments. It's got all the emails and stuff like that on there as well. Um, the email address, if you just want to know more details, um, is CZ Initiative Tournaments uh, at gmail.com. That isn't the PayPal email but you know you confirm your place by paying that is you know i can't can't really hold places for people we are in the crux of um being pretty much full so um like i said we're just looking looking through our reserve list and stuff and going through that at the moment um for the people who haven't paid yet so that's where we are hopefully that all makes sense i hope you enjoyed it's turned into quite a long video, I apologise about that. If you've stuck with us, brilliant. If you haven't, eh, you can't hear us anyway. But it'd be interested to know what you think about the missions. I'm massively chuffed for the fact that we are ITC registered as well. I can't wait to go for it and just see what. what's actually going to happen, what lists are going to happen when they come in. I'm really interested to know what's going to happen at LVO. Could that change people's lists? And officially, I think we're one of the first, we're not that far off being one of the first tournaments of the year because the ITC registrations are closed, I think, at the end of this month, 25th, 26th, um, because LVO is like the final of it, which is fair enough. Um, if you don't know what LVO is, it's Las Vegas Open, I believe, is what it stands for. There's a tournament in Las Vegas, huge tournament, love to go, but just don't have to pay out for a flight in Las Vegas. Plus also, I think I'll be missed by my children, because you'd want to make a couple of days of it at least, you know. Um, but that's where we're at. It's all registered. Get points for playing, go for the, inter the international tournament, not international, independent tournament circuit it's going to be amazing i can't wait interested get in touch join the group it's going to be a lot of banter a lot of chats on there It'd be interested to know what you think of lists as well even if you're playing or not playing but tell us what you think of the tournament pack apart from that i hope you have a good one and happy hobbying